Hey guys, you're listening to English Made Simple. This is episode 48, numero 48. Hey guys, this is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. How are you? Como están? Welcome to another episode of English Made Simple. Hope you enjoyed the last uh, week's episode, number 46, where we learned to pronounce regular verbs. Remember, I gave you a test at the end of the episode uh, where it was your turn to pronounce some regular verbs. Uh, so what I would like to do is give you the answers at the very end of this episode. So keep listening till the end and see how many of those regular verbs you got right. But in this episode, we are going to talk about something really exciting. We're going to talk about irregular verbs. By the way, the opposite of the word regular is irregular, not unregular, okay? <laughs> Don't you love irregular verbs? I love them. No, no, I don't. I really don't. I hate them. But you know what? I use them so often that I forget how much I hate them. I use them every day. But before we go into it, I'd like to send a special greeting to a few listeners from Spain. Yep, España. Hello to Irene from Gijón in Spain. And uh, hello to her friend, Noelia, from a town called La Viana. The two friends from Spain are raving fans of English Made Simple Show. Thank you girls for listening. Also, a special hello to Juan Andres from uh, Spain as well, from the beautiful city of Madrid. Thanks for your kind words and thank you for tuning in to my show. Right. Awesome. It's great to hear people from Spain tuning in. You know, I'm currently watching some Spanish telenovelas like um, Grand Hotel and another one called Velvet. Uh, it's uh, showing on Netflix, so, you know, why not? This is how I get my daily dose of Spanish. <laughs> well, it's better than uh, watching the uh, debate between Trump and Hillary. That's a fiasco. That's another circus. So let's not talk about that. Right. Let's continue. Back to the irregular verbs. In this episode, we are going to learn some common irregular verbs. There are three that we use every day. There are three irregular verbs that you guys already know. We use them so often that we take them for granted. These verbs are to be, to do, and to have. Right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. In this episode, I will share other popular ones um, and give you some examples. I will also share a tip on how you can learn these verbs faster. And it involves singing. <laughs> We'll see. Also, don't forget um, that at the end of this show, I will share the answers to the test from the last episode. I gave you a list of about 15 verbs to practice. So at the end of this episode, I would like to share the answers with you. So keep listening, all right? Right, let's continue. I remember when I used to learn irregular verbs, it was all about memorizing them. I had a list of about 50 irregular verbs, I remember. And it was so overwhelming to see them all and then to think to myself, whoa, this is not a complete list. There are more irregular verbs out there. There's more. There's more than 50. So I found this great YouTube video uh, where this uh, German guy raps and sings along to about 80 irregular verbs. <laughs> He's uh, singing along to music and you can sing along together with him. I quite like his style. It's cool. It definitely helps you memorize uh, some verbs. He's also got translation in German too, if you're curious to learn German language. By the way, people from uh, Germany, country Germany, are called Germans, not germs, okay? <laughs> germs. <laughs> germs are actually microorganisms that can develop into a bacteria. <laughs> people from Germany or Alemania in Spanish, they are called Germans, okay? So this guy who created this video is a German guy and he has translations in German. Just ignore that if you're not interested, but focus on the verbs. 
If you are in my Facebook group as well as my Facebook page, English Made Simple podcast page, I will share this video with you and I hope it will help you, okay? And now, here's a list of verbs you must know in order to have a flowing conversation. I use these verbs in my episodes all the time, so you should already be familiar with them, okay? Cool! The words like to come, past tense, came, participle, come, then we have go, went, gone, we have give, gave, given, get, got, got or gotten participle. You can use either got or gotten as a participle. Another one, forget, forgot, forgotten. I use this a lot because I forget things, okay? Oh no, I forgot my keys, ah, okay? Uh, to find, found, found. To think, thought, thought. Um, what's the other one I use? To understand, understood, understood, okay? Past tense. And then we have one that we used uh, earlier, in some earlier episodes. To see, so and seen, okay? To see, ver. And another one, wake, woke, woken, okay? Are you following me so far, guys? Fantastic. Now, that's a short list of irregular verbs. Now, so these irregular verbs that we've just mentioned, we can use them to form phrasal verbs. Uh -huh. One more thing to remember is phrasal verbs. I love them. Now that we know the most common irregular verbs, we can now form the most common phrasal verbs. It will make us sound super duper fluent. Here are phrasal verbs and some of these we covered in earlier episodes. I think it was episode 6 or 7 where I introduced you to phrasal verbs. That was a long time ago now. But anyway, here they are. To give up. Okay, two words, to give up. The phrasal verb to give up means to quit, which is another irregular verb. To quit is another irregular verb. Uh, to stop something, okay? Don't give up, not te rindas. Past tense is gave up or given up. And then we have get up, got up and gotten up. Okay, in Spanish, levantarse, to get up. In English, it's a phrasal verb, levantarse. To wake up, woke up and waken up. To wake up, phrasal verb, to wake up early in the morning, to open your eyes. In Spanish, we say despertarse. To find out, okay, find out as a phrasal verb means to discover. To come out as a phrasal verb, past tense came out, uh, to appear, to be seen, okay, to be seen, to show up. Oops, that's another phrasal verb, show up is to appear. Now, over to you guys. Did you know that the verb to teach is irregular? What is the past tense of the verb teach? Do you know what it is? It's a tricky one because we don't really use it a lot. Uh, we use the words like teach, you know, we use the words to teach and the words like teacher, but, you know, we don't tend to use it in the past tense often. So I will let you think about that one for a second and I will reveal my answer really soon. Think about it. Uh, what could be the past tense of the verb to teach? I will give you enough time to Google it if you have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In the meantime, I will share the answers from the episode number 46. How do we pronounce regular verbs? Here's what we had in the last episode. To want, past tense is wanted. To use, past tense is used. To work, worked. To call, called. To try, tried. To need, needed. To move, moved. To happen, happened. To include, included. To change, changed. To watch, watched. And uh, two more. To follow, followed. To stop, stopped. Excellent. I hope you got that right. If you're not sure, try to repeat them again. And finally, the past tense of the word to teach is taught. 
And today I have taught you about irregular verbs and I hope you have learned something new today. Ha! Now you know to teach and to learn are both irregular. Learned is irregular in British English. It's more common in British English. And uh, in American English, they tend to use it as a regular verb, learned. Excellent. Fantastic, guys. This brings us to the end of the show. And remember, guys, I will share the YouTube video on my Facebook group, uh, also on my Facebook page. So if you're not part of this group yet, please join and uh, check out the video. It will help you learn the irregular verbs faster, okay? Thank you guys for joining me. It's been a pleasure, as always. All transcriptions are available on my website, English Made Simple. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me a message. If you have enjoyed this episode of English Made Simple, please share it with your friends who may also find it helpful as well. And secondly, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do. Uh, subscribe to the show on iTunes. It will really help me spread the message. And I would also love it if you leave a nice review in iTunes so that I can continue delivering awesome shows to help you learn English on the go. Radio, hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Catch you later, alligator. Hasta la próxima.